Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Jane Withers and Jackie Cooper in her first bow with Edith Fellows. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The Lux Radio Theater is getting old. Not in spirit, but certainly in years. That fact stared us in the face when Jane Withers and Jackie Cooper arrived at our stage door for rehearsal. I suppose I'd expected them to remain at an age when I could win them completely by sending out for chocolate ice cream cones. When the Lux Radio Theater began, Jane Withers was a little girl in pigtails, making her first picture. Now she's a young lady, with all the rights and privileges of stardom. When this curtain rose for the first time, Jackie Cooper was a very recent graduate from the Our Gang comedies. And now, well, he... He has his own razor and speaks baritone. So much for the tricks of time. Jane Withers and Jackie Cooper are starring for us tonight in her first bowl, a picture they made together at Columbia, one that I'm sure will take you back to your own youth for a pleasant reliving of the time when you had or were a first bowl. That's an exciting time for boys and girls and for fathers and mothers. I speak from personal experience. But the young ladies of first bow age in our audience are very important to us. They seem to be our best friends and severest critics. Best friends because no group in our audience is more loyal to Lux Flake. And severest critics because they always have pronounced opinions on the way we're running this theater. Sometimes they think we're right, sometimes they don't. And they don't keep us guessing about what they think about our product either. The girls in Maine may like different stars and plays than the girls in Montana. But way down east and way out west, they all agree that Lux Flakes is, in their own words, simply super. I understand that is the highest award the younger generation gives. Now for a gay and lively play. Her first bowl, starring Jane Withers as Penny and Jackie Cooper as Chuck, with Edith Fellows as Millie Lou. The curtain rises on Act One. Penny Wood and Chuck Harris are pals. They live next door to each other, attend the same high school, and drink the same sodas out of separate straws. Once in a great while, Chuck will even carry Penny's books for her. But their fellowship is purely platonic. They are pals. Chuck is building a glider. Not a model glider, but a man-sized job, which he hopes will carry him aloft, and which Penny hopes will bring him back safely. As he works over it lovingly, Chuck is all enthusiasm. Penny is, frankly, skeptical. Look at it, Penny. Look at those lines. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh, I don't know. I guess it's all right. What do you mean, it's all right? Well, I mean it isn't gorgeous like, well, like pink satin and poetry and things. Oh, it is like a bird is. Yeah, if it flies. Oh, it'll fly all right. You'll see tomorrow when I take it up. Oh, Chuck, I wish you wouldn't. You know, you don't fly so good. Oh, you're swacky. Didn't I get Spike shipped to fly ten minutes? Yeah, two minutes in the air and eight minutes through the chicken house. You might have broken every bone in your body. Oh, bones don't break that easy. And even if they did, they knit right up together again when you're young. You sound just like my dad. Oh, but he's right. You know, you could have been hurt when that glider smashed up. And besides, that one didn't have all these new thingamabobs you put on this one. That's why it smashed. With this new stabilizer, I'll have almost as much control as the air currents. Now, let's see. All we got to do now is get this waterproof paint on. Why's it got to be waterproof? In case I come down in the lake, that's why. Oh, Chuck... You're not going to try and cross the lake, are you? Well, sure I am. Now, come on, help me paint, will you? Oh, I don't think I'd better. You're going to break your neck, and I don't want to feel responsible. No, I don't think I'd better. Oh, Penny, what do you want to be such a wet blanket for? Flying isn't hard. Mm, maybe not. But my dad always says the hardest thing about flying is the ground. Oh, anyway, I don't want to be a flyer. I just want to build planes. I got to, Penny. It's like, well, like you feel about being a great dancer. I don't. Like you said, you, you don't what? I don't want to be a great dancer anymore. I just made up my mind about it last week. I'm going to be a great writer like, well, like Anna St. Vincent Millay. No. 
Well, I'm going to build clippers, too. You know, those great... Big... You know what, Chuck? I bought a whole box of typewriting paper, and I've saved $4 and a quarter toward a typewriter, and then I'm just going to lock myself in my room and write and write and write. Yeah? What about? Well, I haven't made up my mind just yet. Besides, you've got to suffer before you can write. Huh? I said I'll have to suffer. Well, gee, you can't just square off and suffer. It's got to sort of happen to you. Life does it to you. You know, a lady novice was talking on the radio the other day, and she said that everybody had a book inside of them, but you had to suffer to get it out. And she must be swacky. She is not swacky. And then she said you go along doing all sorts of everyday things, when all of a sudden you find yourself in the midst of a great sorrow. What, uh, watch out for that can of paint. She said that's when you're ready to write. That penny, the paint. When your world crumbles about your ears and everything you hold dear to you just splashes at your feet. Hey, the paint, look out. <gasps> Now, now look what you did. A whole can of paint. Oh, Chuck, I'm sorry. You're splashing at your feet. You splashed it, all right. Oh, now, Chuck, listen. Look, look at that mess. Look at it. Well, I said I was sorry, didn't uh, I? I'll pay for your old paint. Hmm. I'll buy it out of my type. Oh, it money. isn't the money. It's the principle of the thing. You've set me back a whole day. All right, so you break your neck a day later. What's the difference? <laughs> Penny, dear, are you in your room? Mother, please. Why, what's the matter, dear? Well, Mother, you might knock before you come into my room like that. Knock? Why, dear? Well, I might have been writing. Were you, dear? Well, no, but I might have been. Well, then it's all right. Here, Penny, I bought you a dress for Saturday night. Your last year's one's really a disgrace. Saturday night? What goes Saturday night? Mervyn's coming home from college. Oh. I thought you might have a little party for him. Mother... Do I have to call him Uncle Mervyn this year? It sounds awful silly. Oh, I don't know, dear. Well, after all, when a girl has an uncle that's only five years older than she is, I think she just ought to call him Mervyn. Very well, dear. And after all, Mother, I'm not a child. Of course not, dear. Now, slip into your dress. Do you like it? Mm, it's nice, I guess. But I'd much rather have had a typewriter. Well, you couldn't come to a party dressed in a typewriter, dear. Mother, you don't seem to realize that society means nothing to me. Nowadays, girls have higher things to think about. And such as what, dear? Such as careers. Why, don't you think by the time a girl is 15, if she's going to be a great dancer or a great writer, she ought to begin dancing or writing, don't you think? If you really want to know what I think about a girl 15... Yes? I think she ought to begin to wash her ears. Oh, Mother, you're laughing at me. If I didn't laugh, I'd cry, darling. About me? Uh-huh. Oh, I suppose I'm silly, but every mother looks forward to a daughter who's pretty and Sweet and, well, I might as well admit it, popular with the boys. <laughs> I wouldn't go across the street for any boy who ever lived. Not even Chuck. Chuck! <laughs> well, I guess there isn't anything in this whole world that interests me any less than Chuck Harris. Say, wait a minute. I just thought of something. Oh, Chuck! Chuck! Hey, Mushface! Look out your window! Oh, hey! What goes? Can I borrow your bike tomorrow morning? I gotta go somewhere. Not tomorrow. I gotta use it myself tomorrow. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Mom wants to know if you and your dad are coming over to dinner. I'll be there in ten minutes. Okay. So long, my face. So long, Hank. <laughs> well, let's take a look at you, son. Uh, don't you think you need a clean shirt? Oh, this one's okay, Dad. Mrs. Wood said all I had to do was put on a tie. Nevertheless, you'd better put on a clean shirt. Remember, the first rule for a lawyer is to be well-groomed. It inspires confidence, even if you can't win the case. But I don't want to be a lawyer, Dad. I want to be a mechanical engineer. Now, just a moment, son. But if I could only go to tech next year, Dad... Chuck, I don't want to hear any more about tech. Now, look, Dad, I guess what I'm going to be is about the most important question we've got to face right now. Well, I was reading an article that said out of every 10,000 college graduates, 9,000 chose the wrong profession. Yes, and maybe you will find flying is the wrong profession. Oh, how many times do I have to tell you? I just want to build planes. It's the greatest profession of the future. Why, look at the way they invented trains when you were a boy. Trains? How old do you think I am? Now, now, change that shirt. Oh, Dad, please listen. When I think of being a lawyer, I just about go swacky. My boy, you're just hitting one of those phases we all go through. I remember when I wanted to go into the movies. Well, maybe you'd have been a lot better actor than you are a lawyer. Well, of all... Well, anyway, you'd have had a chance to find out. You wouldn't have to keep wondering and going to the movies and looking at yourself in the mirror when you come home. If I'd ever dared talk to my father like... When have you ever seen me look in a mirror? Lots of times, Dad. Mm, that's enough about that. And enough about planes. 
You're going to forget all this nonsense, Chuck, and do what you're told. Oh, gosh, Dad, you drive a full of swack. And stop saying swacky. Okay, okay. Now, get into that shirt. Mrs. Wood will be waiting for us. Come on, hurry it up. Now, let's see, Effie. There'll be five of us for dinner. Are you sure we have enough, Effie? Yes, ma'am. Got enough for five. But I wish you'd tell me when you're going to have guests, Miss Wood. Uh, yes, yes, Effie, I know. I forgot about it. Hello, Mrs. Wood. Hello, Millie Lou. Is Penny home, Mrs. Wood? She's upstairs, dear. I imagine she'll be right down. Now, let's see, Effie. Mrs. Wood, I hear your brother Mervyn's coming home from college. My mother said so. Yes, dear. He'll be here sometime tomorrow. <gasps> oh, Kino, he's awful good looking. Who is? Hello, Penny. Your Uncle Mervyn. Oh, I think he's just grand. Now, listen, Millie Lou. Are you going to go gooping around after him again? Who goops around? You goop around. You mush around him like a lovesick cat. It's pretty revolting. Penny. What's for dinner, Mom? It's ham. And stay out of the kitchen. Now, who's going in the kitchen? <gasps> that reminds me. Can I stay to dinner, Mrs. Wood? Mother's in town, and I'm all alone with Cook. Please, can I stay? Why, oh, why, of course, dear, if you'd like to. You know, I'll go home and tell Cook. Um, Effie. I know. Pink five for dinner. It's six. Uh, maybe you'd better send down for some more ham, Effie. Too late. I'll stretch. Evening. Hello, Tom. Hi, Dad. Hello, Penny. Hello, Myrtle. How are you, dear? Hungry? I'm so hungry I could bite into anything that didn't bite me first. Oh, well, go easy on the ham, dear. There are six of us for dinner, and Effie's getting mad. Mrs. Wood, it's Mervyn. What? He, he isn't coming home tomorrow. He's here right now. Oh, well, um, Effie... Seven. Hi, everybody. Marvin's oh, here. Hiya, sis. Hello, Tom. Hiya, Penny. How's it going? Well, we weren't expecting you until tomorrow, Mervyn. Oh, I thought I'd surprise you. Let me have your coat, Mervyn. Oh, I'll take it, Mrs. Wood. Can I hang your head up, too, Mervyn? Okay, here. <gasps> Thanks, I'll go home and change my dress. It's nice to have you home again. Well, see you later, Mervyn. Isn't that revolting? Is she sick or something? Where's your luggage, Mervyn? At the gas station around the corner. Fellow, I drove down with stuff to have a tire fixed, and I ran over to sort of fix things here. Fix things? Uh, yeah, I asked him to stay over the weekend. You don't mind, do you? Oh, why, of course not. Um, Effie, eight. Now, who is he, Merv? Roger Van Vleck. Van Vleck? You mean that killer dealer you've been writing home about? I haven't written about him so much. Oh, haven't you? He lives in New York and Florida, sang the lead in the spring week opera, plays the accordion. Ah, put it on ice. Made the maskers in his freshman year, and his father belongs to two different country clubs. That will do, Penny. Well, I guess I'll run up and watch. See you at dinner, Merv. Okay. I uh, say, I didn't do anything wrong, did I? I mean, inviting Rod? Of course not. I'm glad he's coming. He'll be an extra boy for the party. Who have you invited, sis? Oh, just some of the boys you used to know and a few of Penny's friends. Penny's friends? Do you expect a man like Roger Van Vleck to dance with a lot of giggling little girls? A man who... Who, who... made the mask is in his freshman year and his father belongs to two different country clubs. Now listen, Penny! What's the matter with you? Children, children! Stop calling me children! All right, now calm down. Now listen, sis, listen. While Roger's here, please try and run the house like a house ought to be run. When I visited the Van Vlecks, they had a couple of maids and a butler. And when dinner was served, he didn't just yell, It's on, you better hurry. He said, Dinner is served. Oh, now wasn't that just too, Ducky? That's right, that's right. Be a hoodlum. Roger's sister isn't a day older than you, but she's always dressed for dinner. And she'd take my arm and say... I believe you're taking me in, Mr. Roberts. Oh, really? Well, I believe you're taking me in, Mr. Roberts. woo -hoo! Now, cut it out, Penny, cut it out! Then don't get so excited. I'll run up and fix the guest room for Mr... <gasps> Good gracious, I forgot. The guest room's just been painted. Oh, sis! Penny, you go upstairs and move your things into my room. You'll have to let Roger take yours. Oh, Mother, no. Why, I've got to have my room to lock myself into. Why on earth to you right. have... You've got to be alone to do anything really big. You'll have to put off your writing for a few days or write something not quite so big. Oh, but Here Mother... Here he is. Go on, Penny. Now, Go listen. On. Come on, Penny. Hurry up, dear. Oh, Mother, this is a jip. Mother, I've got to watch. Here you are, Raj. In here. Hi. <laughs> you get the donut patch, Raj? Yes, everything's super. Shall I bring these suitcases in or will your man? Our man? Oh, oh, you mean our man. Yes. <laughs> well, <clears throat> we'll see about him after dinner. Yeah, it's a nice, nice place you have here, Merv. Looks like quite a village. Say, there were a couple of little numbers down at the gas station that weren't bad at all. Yeah, we got some pretty sparky zombies here. <laughs> but will you see my girl, Julie Harris? Yeah? How are you doing? Okay, but I could use a little of your technique. Well, who couldn't? I'll give you a few pointers. <laughs> I say, I'll, I'll give you a few pointers someday, Merv. <laughs> okay. Only remember, she's my girl. 
Oh, sis, this is Mr. Van Vleck, my sister, Raj. How do you do? I'm so glad you could come, Roger. Well, I, I'd have come a lot sooner if I'd have known Mervyn had such a good-looking sister. Whoa. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mervyn, maybe you'd better bring Roger's grips upstairs. Okay, I'll be right with you, Raj. Uh, Roger, will you excuse me a minute? I sure. Don't worry about me. I see you've got a piano. Well, that's all I need to make myself at home. Yes, please do. Mother, do I have to move out all my clothes just so... Oh. Hi. Hello there. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought Mother was in here. My name's Roger Van Vleck. Oh, yeah. How do you do? Say, say you can't be Miss Penelope Wood. And why not? But Mervyn said that... Well, the old fox. He said you were a scrawny little kid, only 15. Oh, he did, did he? Well, how old do you think I am? Well, it's, it's pretty hard to tell a woman's age nowadays... 19, 20, maybe 21. Well, well you're not so very wrong. <laughs> Won't you sit down, Mr. Van Vleck? <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. Do you mind if I smoke, Miss Wood? Oh, no. No, not at all. Perhaps you'd like one? Who, me? Oh, oh no. That is, I mean... Oh, well, I've given it up. You know... You know, I, I felt sure you'd say that. Why? Well, the minute I saw you, I, I knew you were one of these really feminine women. Are you kidding? Oh, I mean, oh, oh, well, yes, I am. Oh, yes, I, I really am. And, well, you know, there's something so, uh, uh, so masculine about smoking, isn't there? Well, I mean, a really feminine woman doesn't do it because, well, because it just isn't feminine. <laughs> hmm. Yes, you're absolutely right, Miss Wood. Oh, but of course not. For a man, it's entirely different. <laughs> Practically all the men I know smoke. Except Chuck Harris. And you know that his father gave him $20 to promise he wouldn't, and he spent every cent of it on his glider. Really? Is, uh, is Mr. Harris your fiancé? My what? Oh, Chuck! Goodness, no. He just lives across the street. And oh. besides, Chuck is only 16. <laughs> Men are always so much younger than girls, don't you think? Well, I mean, a girl who's 16, or anyway, who's almost 16, is years older than a man at 16. Or don't you think so? I, I certainly do. But wait, wait, don't move. What's the matter? What is it? You, you with the light through your hair. Beautiful. Me? <laughs> you ought, you know, you know, you ought always to wear red. It's your color. Red? My color? Oh, red. <laughs> you. Hey, hey. Oh, for heavens. <laughs> Would you please excuse me, Mr. Van Vleck? Certainly. <laughs> Who is it? Hiya, Hag. Oh, it's you. Uh oh, you knew I was coming, didn't you? Hey, something smells good. What's cooking? Oh, Chuck. I'd like for you to meet our guest. Who? Oh, oh Mr. Van Vleck. <laughs> this is Chuck. I mean, Mr. Harris, who lives across the street. And Mr. Harris, this is Mr. Van Vleck who's visiting us. <laughs> I mean, he's visiting Mervyn. And Mr. Van Vleck is visiting here from New York and Florida. I'm glad to meet you, Harris. Oh. I've just been hearing about your, uh, your glider from Miss Wood. <laughs> from who? From me. Well, he said Miss Wood. Oh. Oh, you... Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, have a cigarette, Harris? Oh, no, no, I remember. She says you don't smoke. Who says? Miss Wood. Oh, Miss Wood. What are you talking so much about me for? <laughs> Well, naturally, one talks about one's friends. <laughs> what else is there for one to talk about? Hey, where'd you get to talking that one stuff? Oh, one just talks the way one always does. <laughs> yeah, but one never talked like that before. What goes? Hey, Roger, your room's ready. Oh, good, good, I'll be right up. Hold everything, beautiful. I'll just whip up and watch for this. <sighs> well, Chuck, what did you think of him? Mm, I don't know. Kind of a dope, isn't it? What did you say? I said he acts like a dope. Why, Chuck Harris, <gasps> you're speaking that way about, about a man who, who made the maskers in his freshman year and whose father belongs to two different country clubs. Evening, Benny. Oh, hello, Mr. Harris. Well, Benny, I hear you have a visitor. Oh, yes, and he's simply wonderful. Well, if you two will pardon me, I'll just whip up and wash for dinner. to loo Well, what... What's got into her? Oh, she's swacky. Stop saying that. Now I think we're all here. Oh, no, Penny isn't, and Millie Lou. It's on. You better hurry. I mean, dinner is served. 
Uh, thank you, Effie. Oh, Millie Lou, you're just in time. Oh, Mrs. Wood, I forgot I'd ask Shirley and Ralph Wentworth to my house for dinner, so I had to bring them with me. You brought them? Mm. Where are they? Oh, they're just outside. I'll go out and get them. Um, Effie. Effie, there'll be two more. That makes ten. Yes, ten, Effie. What can I do about it? All right, but it ain't gonna stretch that fur. Uh, now, where's Penny? Uh, Penny? Oh, Penny. I'm right here, Mother. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hey. Why, Penny. What's she all dressed up for? Is that a new dress, Penny? <laughs> Why, Chuck, dear, you act as if you've never seen me in a party dress before. Well, I don't know. Last time I was over for dinner, you wore your tennis shirt. Oh, shut up. Is, uh, is dinner served, Mother? <laughs> Why, yes, dear. Oh, splendid. <gasps> Mr. Van Vleck, I believe you're taking me in. Of course, John. This way, Mr. Van Vleck. I tell you, the girl is swacky. <laughs> Mr. DeMille and our stars, Jane Withers and Jackie Cooper, will return in just a moment for Act Two of Her First Bowl. Now, let's listen in a minute. Young Patty is out to land a job in the big city. She's staying with Ellen, a friend from her hometown. Oh, Ellen, it's so good to see you. I could talk for hours. But if I'm going to land that job tomorrow morning, I've just got to get some sleep. I could do with a little shut-eye myself. Come on, you get yourself unpacked while I fix the couch for you. <laughs> I didn't bring a thing with me but a toothbrush and a nighty, so that won't take long. Da, 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 da. Oh, say, Ellen, you have got some Lux Flakes, haven't you? Right on the bathroom shelf, Pam. <laughs> okay, I'll just nip in and lux these undies so they'll be fresh in the morning. I'll be through in a second. Yes, it takes only a moment to lux under things every night. New Quick Lux gives you suds so fast, three times as fast in water as cool as your hand as any of ten other popular soaps by actual test. Not just twice as fast, mind you, three times as fast. It's so gentle, too. Keeps slips and pretty underthings fresh and new-looking longer. That's important nowadays, when it costs more to replace your lovely underthings. But most important of all, nightly luxing protects daintiness, makes you sure of freshness. Ellen says... Underthings absorb perspiration, you know. Unless they're luxed after every wearing, you're apt to offend. And the worst part of it is you don't know yourself when you do. Nobody likes to tell you, so the only way to be sure... ...is never, never take chances. Get a thrifty big box of Lux Flakes from your grocer tomorrow. Lux underthings every night. Dresses, blouses, and sweaters, often. New Quick Lux comes in the same familiar package. Costs you no more. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act two of her first bow. Starring Jane Withers as Penny and Jackie Cooper as Chuck with Edith Fellows as Millie Lou. Penny Wood is falling in love with Roger, who gives her his attention because she's the only girl in the vicinity. Or to express it in the language of the younger generation, Penny is gooing over Joe College, who is slinging the woo heavy on account there aren't any cuddle cats. <clears throat> Now Roger, seated at the piano, is giving out for the song he's just written. Penny gazes at him, starry-eyed. And when I fall in love, my dear, the stars may shine above, my dear, but I won't know a thing, my dear, cause I'll be looking at you. Well? Oh, Roger. That song, it stirs my depths. Sure. You, uh, you wouldn't kid me, would you? Did you really write it all yourself? Uh, sure, I knock them out fast. You're my inspiration, Cookie. Oh. You know, Roger, you're so, so... Huh? Well, I mean, all the way you look and the way you talk. You're not like any of the boys around here. Well, well, I guess it's just because I'm a little more of a cosmopolite. Oh. Oh, I thought you were American. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, of course. <clears throat> but you see, you see, I've been to Europe twice. Oh. Oh. Oh, Roger, please play it again. Sure. Listen, sis. 
You gotta do something about Penny. Why, what's the matter, Mervyn? Look at her in there. I tell you, she's making an exhibition of herself. The whole town's laughing. Oh, I guess not the whole town. Well, anyway, the whole street. She hasn't had that party dress off since Roger's been here. Hello, Mervyn! Oh, for the love of... Are you in again? Hello, Mrs. Wood. How are you, Millie Lou? Is Penny here? She's in the living room with Roger. Gee, he's certainly giving her a big rush, isn't he? Movies last night and some sodas and some nuit d'amour eau de cologne. It's a dollar and a half a bottle. There, sis. Accept an expensive gifts from men at her age. I think it's a very good thing for Penny to have a little attention. It's making her think about her look. I'll say. She was down to the beauty shop before it even opened this morning. She had a hair wash and a manicure. Boy, she sure must be in love. Love, love. It curdles me. <laughs> Mother, I told Roger I'd be right with him. I'm sure Roger can spare you for a minute. Here, hold this yarn, dear. <sighs> All right. Penny, I thought I told you not to wear that party dress again. It won't be fresh for tomorrow night. Tomorrow? <gasps> oh, the party. Say, you know, Mother, you're absolutely right. I ought to have another dress for the party. Well, Penny, I wasn't Oh, suggesting... but I ought to, Mother. And oh, there's a perfectly lovely one down at the Bonton. Penny, that awful place. It is an awful place. And, oh, Mother, that dress is the oomphiest thing you ever saw. It's called the Glamour Girl, all red with a gold belt and black velvet poppies and absolutely nothing over the shoulders, <laughs> not even a strap. Um, what holds it up? Oh, well, uh, your figure or something. If I were you, I wouldn't pin my faith on it. <laughs> Mother, will you tell me something? What, dear? Mother... When did you fall in love with Father? I mean, well, when did you first know you were falling in love? Well, Penny, what a question. Oh, it's, uh, it's for my writing. Well, I mean, well, if someone's going to be a great writer, I think she ought to know all about love, don't you? Yes, it might help. You know, there must have been a time when you and Father were in love with each other, or you wouldn't have been married, would you? <laughs> oh, Penny, would you mind telling me exactly what you call the way your father and I feel toward each other now? Oh, well, of course, you're very fond of each other. And I suppose you've got your memories. But you wouldn't call it love, would you? I mean, well, you don't shiver down your back every time father comes in the room, do you? Oh, well, not every time. And you don't just keep waiting for the sound of his voice and keep thinking about the way his hair goes up in front. His hair does not go up in front. I'll have you know that your father is a very handsome man. Uh-huh. Miss Wood, the dough's all ready for you. Set them cinnamon rolls for breakfast. All right, Effie, coming. Finish the ball for me, will you, Penny? Oh, Mother! Yes, oh, gee. Hiya, Cookie. Oh, Roger. Hey, why did you run out on me? Am I losing my appeal? Oh, Roger, I, I wouldn't have stayed away. Honestly, I wouldn't have. <sighs> Only I had to wind this wool for Mother. Well, here, I'll hold it for you. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, 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 you're sure you don't mind? And you sure it won't tire you? I sure I'm sure. Well, well all right, then. Hold out your hand. Uh, like yeah. like this? Oh, so, oh, I dropped it. I'll pick it up. Oh, no, let I'll me. I'll do it, dear. Here, I'll just... Oh. oh, gee, I'm sorry. Did I hurt you? Oh, no, but your head... Yeah, I socked you right on the chin, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Let me see. Ow. Where's it hurt? Right here on my chin. Here? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll kiss it for you. Huh? Oh. There. There, that better? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's the matter? Didn't anyone ever kiss you before? Well, I... No. No, I guess not. Oh, Roger. Roger, I hmm? think I ought to tell you. I've been deceiving you. Well, how's that? Well, I'm... I'm not 20, the way you thought. I'm only 15. Oh, sure. Sure, I knew all the time. And you mean you're not mad at me? Mad at you? Stick that chin up. Oh, Roger. Now, now what do you think? I think that, oh, Roger. <laughs> you know, you're a funny kid. Oh, Roger, it's not going to be easy. Well, what isn't? Well, we're bound to have trouble with my parents. Why? Well, they'll say I'm too young, and they won't give their consent for years and years. Give their consent? What do we need? Oh, Oh. Oh, but I don't care. Do you, uh, Roger? Look, Penny, I think I... I don't care about anything. Mm. Oh, isn't it priceless? Why, you'll be Uncle Mervyn's nephew and law. Penny, oh. Penny, I'd I, I better run along now. I promised to play uh, Merv some badminton. Yes. When will you be back? Uh, uh, later, Penny. Oh, listen. I, uh, I want to talk to you about the party tomorrow. And Raj. 
I'm going to save the first, last, and supper dance just for you. Yes, that'll, that'll be swell. But huh? listen, we won't say anything to anyone about. How about you know what? We'll just keep it a secret for a while. Mr. and Mrs. Roger Van Vliet. <sighs> Hello. Um, oh, hello, Chuck. What's wrong with you? Not a thing. Why? Oh, you look dopey. <laughs> Here, I brought you an ice cream cone. Oh, thanks. Hmm, maple nut. Strawberry underneath. Say, you aren't going to keep on dressing up like that all the time, are you? Oh, but naturally. Really nice people always dress for dinner. And the gentlemen wear tuxedo pants. Mm, well, swacky. I like to see anybody try and get me into a tux. <laughs> You haven't got one to get into, that's why. No, I could have if I wanted. Dad offered to let me wear his tomorrow at the party. Are you going to? Well, if I do or I don't, you got the first, last, and supper dance with me, see? I'm not going to get stuck with one of those snooty dames I got to be polite to. Well, now you listen here, Mr. Charles Knowlton Harris. A gentleman doesn't ask a lady to save the first, last, and supper dance just so he won't have to be polite. You talk like it was some kind of a special treat to have the first, last, and supper with you. Well, maybe it's not to you. Well, I guess to some people. Well, anyway, I regret to inform you that I'm already engaged for the first, last, and supper dance. Well, you don't have to make a song out of it. Who are you going with? With Mr. Roger Van Vleck. And he'll be wearing tuxedo pants and a white coat. He would, that wet drip. <laughs> Remarks like that just show how little you know about real men of the world. Mr. Roger Van Bleck is a cosmopolite. A what? A cosmopolite. <laughs> if you weren't so ignorant, you'd know that that means going to Europe twice. <laughs> Why don't you go lock yourself in your room and write and write and write? Not tonight. Roger's taking me to the movies. Huh? Oh, he is, huh? Why, Chuck, you're not jealous, I hope. Jealous of what? That mush face? You ought to hear him over on our porch giving out with that phony line. <laughs> your porch? Well, what's he doing on your porch? My sister just came home from school. Your sister, Julie? Well, since when have I had more than one sister? Hey, where are you going? Uh, but over to your house. I want to say hello to Julie. <laughs> oh, Mervyn, where did you find this person? He's a riot. Now, now, don't you pay any attention to him, Julie. Raj always pours the roses on when there's a new girl around. Well, can I help myself if women cry for me? Well, Julie doesn't. She's mine. Oh, I'm nothing of the sort, Merv. There, you see, fella. I guess you're just cooking with the wrong gas. Now, you listen here, Roger. Now, listen. don't be a goon, Merv. Hello, Julie. Who's that? Oh, is that you, Penny? Yeah. Welcome home, Julie. Thanks. Oh, Roger, it's almost nine, you know. It's the second show, and Carrie Grant and Donald Duck tonight, and you oh, said... Oh, see, that's right. That's right. Thanks for reminding me. Come on, Julie. When you get tired of Carrie, you can look at me. Mm-hmm. Lead on, Superman. Oh, but Roger... Good night, Penny. Little girl should be in bed by nine, honey. I'll go get my coat. Now, you wait a second, Roger. You can't get away oh, with cut this. Cut it out, will you? You asked me to give you a few pointers, didn't you? But... Well, I've got to study the girl. But... How am I going to give you the dope if I don't see her in action? But... Make it snappy, Julie. Papa's waiting. <laughs> Mervyn, tell me. Is Roger just playing her for you? Well, you heard him, didn't you? But, boy, am I going to make sure... Hey, wait for me! Oh, Mother, you've simply got to understand. Penny, I'm tired. I'm in a hurry and my feet hurt. Now, let's save argument by pretending you told me for the tenth time all the different reasons why you've got to have that dress for tonight. And for the tenth time, I've said no. Oh, but, Mother, all that one of the bon ton cost is $15. A measly little $15. Penny, I said no. Oh, Mother, you're perfectly cruel. I tell you what to do. You give me the $15 now, and then you can take it out of my lunch money all next term. $15 or 15 cents. You can't have that dress. Now, that's the end of it, Penny. But, Mother! Oh, I've got to have that $15. No. Oh. Hey, Penny, come out here a minute. All right. Hey, Penny, have I got news? Yeah. Listen, I just finished the glider. It's all set and ready to go, and tomorrow morning I'm taking it out, and I'm going to fly it clear across the lake. Yeah. I even hired a speedboat to follow me up, you know, just in case. Speedboat? Yeah, you know, in case I have to make a fourth landing or something. It's costing me $15, but it's worth it, don't you think? $15? Chuck, did you say $15? Yeah, why? What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Only, uh, uh, Chuck. Chuck, I've been thinking things over. Why, suppose your new gadgets don't work. Suppose you get killed. Oh, you got to take some risk. Oh, but, Chuck, I can't stand worrying about you. 
Honestly, I, I couldn't enjoy the party tonight thinking you're going to do that tomorrow. Have you gone swacky? Well, no, but... Well, if you should crash down and hurt yourself, I just couldn't stand it, Chuck. Growing up next door to you and all, what? it would just about kill me. Well, gee, Penny, I, I didn't know you felt like that. I, I wouldn't want you to worry. Oh, but I would. I'd worry like anything. <laughs> now, you won't try it, will you? Promise me you won't? But I got to. You know I got to. You mean you'll do it anyway, even knowing how I feel? I got to. But I've got to have that $15. What? Uh-oh. Uh, that is, I mean... Wait a minute, I get it. All that song and dance you gave me was just so she could borrow my $15. Oh, no, huh? Chuck, honestly... Honestly, I... nothing. I wouldn't trust you across the street. Oh, Chuck. Look, twisting a fellow around and he doesn't know where he's at, just so as to get at his money. You, you gold digger. Oh, Chuck. <laughs> now what's the matter? Oh, oh, cut it out, will you? Oh, what are you sniffling about? There's no use you trying to get around me that way. I don't care how hard you try. <laughs> you can cry yourself blind. <laughs> oh, now stop it, please. Jenny. Cut it out. Please. Calling me a gold digger when I was just worried about how you might break your neck or a leg or something. Well, all right, all right, all right. I guess maybe I was wrong. Here, Penny, take it. Take what? The money. If you need it so bad, it's okay with me. Here. Oh, Chuck. Chuck, you're simply wonderful. Oh, thanks, Chuck. I'll never forget you for this. Never. Honest. Boy, am I a dope. Chuck, where are you? Yes, Dad. Come over here a minute. I want to speak to you. Coming, Dad. What's on your mind? Chuck, watch this. I hear about you building a glider. Huh? Where did you hear about... Never mind where I heard. Somebody saw you building a glider and had the intelligence to inform me. Now, where is it? Now, Dad, listen. Where is it? Dad, please. Are you going to tell me? I can't. If you knew where it was, you'd break it up or something. You can bet your life I would. I'll bust it into kindling wood. Now, where is it? Now, look, Dad. I know you've got to mind your father and all that, but... Gee. I mean, well, look. If Shakespeare's father said, you've got to stop writing plays, or, or Mr. Paderewski's father said, I'm going to chop your piano up for kindling wood, why... We wouldn't have any plays. We wouldn't have any music. No, and if I can find where you've hidden it, you're not going to have a glider. Oh, Dad. Hello? Hello, is this the Bonton? Well, this is Miss Wood, Mr. Jones. Miss Wood. Penny. Yes. Uh, listen, you know that red dress I was admiring? Oh, will you hold it for me, please? Yes, I'll be down this afternoon. That's right. Now, don't forget. Goodbye. Oh, hello, Roger. Uh, hello, kitten. Oh, Roger, I'm glad you're here. I, uh, I, I want to ask you something. No, well, well, I'm in sort of a hurry. Roger, haven't you found out enough about Julie yet? Huh? Found out what? Oh, well, please don't think... Well, that is... I, I mean, I'm sophisticated enough not to be jealous, but, well, being with her last night and all, I thought probably you'd have studied her enough so you could give Mervyn that dope you promised him. Oh, sure, yes. And I hope it'll be about a night, because I've got a new dress. Red. Yes? Yeah. Well, you remember what you said, you know, about, about red being my color. Oh, oh yes, yes, sure. And then, oh, Roger... Oh, look, kitten, I've got to run. I'll see you tonight, huh? Oh, but, Roger... Penny, will you help me with these packages? Okay, Dan. What's the matter? Are you sick? No, I'm not sick. Well, you look terrible. Oh, gee, why does everybody say that? There's nothing the matter with me, nothing at all. All right, all right. Take it easy. I'm sorry. Oh, Dad. Yes, dear? Can I ask you a question? Sure. What is it? Dad, did you fall in love with Mother at first sight? Well, no, not exactly. The first time I saw your mother, she had pink spots all over her. Spots? Yeah, they turned out to be measles. Well, what did you do? Caught them from her. Oh, now, Dad, this is really important to me. When did you first find out that you were in love with Mother? Well, that's a rather a difficult question to answer. I, I, I know. I believe it was the day that she slapped me in the face. She slapped you in the face? Well, I turned the hose on her brother, and it hit, hit her new hat. She slapped me, I kissed her, and, well, there you are. But why should Mother slapping you make you kiss her? My dear, I've been wondering that for 20 years. <laughs> Bring in those packages, will you, Penny? Uh, in a minute. She slapped him. She slapped him, and he kissed her. I don't get it. But maybe it works. <laughs> We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.
After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille will bring us Act Three of Her First Bow, starring Jane Withers and Jackie Cooper. Now, Sally has a story for you. Once upon a time, there was a pretty little bride. She had a brand new two-room apartment and a brand new husband, and my, did he like to eat. Why, every night when he came home, he'd say, Hi, you sugar, what's cooking? And oh, my, you should have seen the stack of dishes that little bride had to do every night. Well, it wasn't long before her pretty hands got red and rough and hard. Oh, she was so ashamed of them. She tried to hide them, but of course she couldn't. So one day, she overheard a very catty remark. Something about girls who let themselves go after they're married and don't even bother to keep their hands looking nice. And how hard it is for a man to get ahead if he has a wife like that. Meow! <laughs> well, she was in a state. She thought and thought. And then she had an idea. She'd use Lux Flakes for her dishes. Well, she knew how gentle New Quick Lux was. Why, well, she always used it for her stockings and undies and things. So she stopped putting that harsh old wash day soap in her dishpan. And now, she does just as many dishes, but she whisks them into those gentle luck studs, and they come out sparkling, bright, and clean in no time. <coughs> and her husband's just as proud as she is of her lovely hands, soft and white and smooth as they ever were. Yes, even though you've let your hands get rough and red and ugly from harsh soaps in the dishpan, you don't have to let them stay that way. Change to gentle Lux Flakes for your dishes and see how quickly your hands lose that ugly dishpan look. Grow softer, smoother, and lovelier again. New Quick Lux is gentle, fast, and a little goes so far, it's thrifty, too. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Curtain rises on the third act of her first bowl. For a 15-year-old girl suffering the pangs of love, the world is a sad, dark place. But Penny is doing her best to brighten it. Clad in her new, very red dress, she gazes at herself in the mirror. Penny sees a woman, tall and dark, a woman with gleaming white shoulders and mysterious, haunting eyes, a woman of the world. But Penny's mother sees a 15-year-old girl in a violent red dress which shows up all her freckles. Penelope. Yes, Mother. When did you get that dress? Why, I, this afternoon. But Chuck loaned me the fifteen dollars. So Never I mind. I don't care. But I want you to take it off this minute. But Mother, I can't. Why haven't anything else to wear? You can wear your other one. Oh, not that awful rag. Why, it's got sleeves and it makes me look like a child. Penny, do you hear me? Take that thing off. Penny, Penny, listen. You better come right down. Roger's with Julie and they're sitting out on the porch. Holding hands. Oh, do you see, Mother? I've got to get down there right away. Now, Penny, don't get so upset. I'm not upset. I'm desperate. How would you feel if you saw another woman trying to take Father away from you? Penny. Well, I'll sit down and watch Roger for you, Penny. No, I'm coming up. Wait, Penny. Oh, Mother, I've got to get down there. Julie's taking him away from me. She couldn't do it if he didn't let her. Oh, yes, she could. Because she's older and she knows how. I've got to be a woman of the world, too. Is that your ambition, Penny? I thought you wanted to be a writer. Well, how am I ever going to be a writer if I don't have anything to write about? And how am I ever going to learn about life if you won't let me live? Oh, but, Penny, you are living. Every day, every hour. Oh, that's not living school and tennis and playing with Chuck. That's just existing. Living is being in love and feeling and wanting things and fighting for them. Listen, you're my mother, and you can make me take this dress off, and you can make me put on that child's dress with sleeves. But I'm warning you, if you do... I'll never forgive you. Never, as long as I live. No, I don't believe you ever would. Oh, Mother, can't you see I'm not a baby anymore? I'm growing up. Now, are you going to be mean and cruel and make me change my dress? Or are you going to let me go downstairs? I'm going to be mean and cruel and let you go downstairs. Oh, Mother, darling. And she's got a red dress, Chuck, and it hasn't even got any shoulder straps. Are you kidding? Cross my heart. <gasps> Look, here she comes now. Hello, everybody. Holy smoke. <laughs> Hello, Chuck. Gee. <laughs> well, what's the matter? 
<laughs> what are they laughing at? It's supposed to be, Penny. <laughs> Why didn't you tell us it was a masquerade? <laughs> oh, Roger, you... Does your mother know you're down here like that? <laughs> oh, Roger. Penny, come back. Penny. Oh, I don't believe it yet. Why don't you shut up? <laughs> Mother, they laughed at me, darling. They laughed at me. <laughs> there, there, dear. It's not that serious. And Roger was there, and he laughed too. And, oh, Mother, I'm going to lock myself in and stay there till the party's over. You're going to do nothing of the sort. You're going to wash your face and put on another dress and go back downstairs. But, Mother, I can't. Oh, you didn't hear them. I did hear them. They were very silly, and so were you. Penny, a little while ago, you talked about learning to be a woman of the world. Well, that's what a woman of the world would do. You mean she'd, she'd wash her face and put on another dress? And hold her head up and sail right back. Pretend nothing mattered less than their laughter. Even with, with Roger there? Especially with Roger there. All right. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> Dad, what do you want to go and spoil a party for? This has nothing to do with the party, Chuck. I just wanted to tell you that I've located your glider. And tomorrow morning, you and I are going to have a little breaking up party all our own. But you can't, Dad. I've worked for months on that glider. It's got all my new ideas. I'm I... sorry, Chuck. That's my last word. But, Dad. All right, then. Millie Lou. Millie Lou. Hey, Millie Lou. What do you want? Listen, come here. I've got to leave for a while. Can you come along and help me? I'd ask Penny, only she's kind of busy. Well, what do you want me to do? I want you to help me get a glider down to the lake. A glider? Just help me get in the car, that's all, will you? Well, what are you going to do with a glider at night? What do you do with a glider any time? You fly it. Come on. Mervyn. Oh, Mervyn, have you seen Roger? Yeah, I've seen him. He's sitting out there on the porch with Julie. Oh, thanks. I, uh, I want to talk to him about something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, look, here's something I forgot to show you, Julie. It's a poem. A poem? Can he send it to you? Yes, listen. Oh, no, don't. The pulsing passion in the heart of me sears like a flame at the sound of thy nerve. Oh, oh, you made it up yourself. Oh, word of honor. Wait until you hear this part. <laughs> the song on your lips, the light in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello. Uh, Penny. Oh, hello, Penny. We were just talking... Uh, he, he, he was showing me your, your poem. Yes, I know. Oh, that little piece of trash I wrote. My goodness, I hope you didn't take it seriously. Why, well, I just tossed it off for a joke. You don't suppose I'd hand my real poetry around to just, just anyone, do you? Oh, listen, Penny... Oh, please, I'm... don't apologize. <laughs> Why, well, I've never seen anyone look so silly in my whole life as you two, sitting there, thinking that I meant it. Just like those nitwits inside who thought I meant that dress joke. What? I was just doing it for a laugh. <laughs> a laugh. Oh, Penny, you're a wonderful little actress, but, well, you make me feel very ashamed. Oh, please, please go away. Penny! Penny, where are you? What's that child talking about? Millie Lou, come here. Penny, listen. What's the matter, Millie? Millie Lou, what were you saying about a glider? I told you he's up in it. Who is? Chuck, he's flying all around the lake and he can't get down. Chuck! Flying? Are you sure you... Sure, I'm sure. I saw... Tom, will you call the police station? we better get the fire department, too. We'll need floodlights. Listen, everybody. Drive your cars down to the lake and turn on your headlights. Chuck's up in a glider. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Keep your eye out for a glider flying somewhere over the lake. Report it once if you sight it. It's that dopey Harris boy again. That is all. talking, Mother. It's all my fault. If Chuck had a speedboat out there, he'd be all right. But but I took that money for the dress, and if he drowns, I've killed him. And all because of a silly dress. Oh, Mother. Don't cry, dear. I'm not crying. I can't cry. Isn't that funny, Mother? When Roger laughed at me, I, I cried and cried. Oh, I wanted to die. But now I can't cry because it hurts so up here in my throat. Penny, dear. That other was just, oh, just play hurt. I wanted to suffer, but now, oh, Mother, if anything happens to Chuck, I can't bear it. 
I simply can't bear it. Is there any sign of them yet? No, they've got boats all over the lake. Turn those lights on. Shoot them up this way. Oh, Chuck, Chuck. There he is. Where? Where? Where is he? There. See, way down low. He's coming over this way. Quiet. Quiet, everybody, please. Here, give me that megaphone. Here. Hello, Chuck. Hello. Hello. Look at me. I'm flying. Quiet. Quiet, please. Chuck, come down. Come down, do you hear? Okay, Dad. Be careful, son. Be careful. Don't worry, it's a sin. Here I come. Look out below. Here I come. Here I Look come. Look out for that tree. No! <laughs> Son? I'm all right. My head stopped hurting. Your arm, Chuck, is it bad? It's just scratched, too. He landed in the tree. I'd better call the drugstore for some more bandage. Dad, wasn't there any of my glider left? I'm afraid not. They said it was smashed to bits. Oh, Dad. I'm sorry if I worried you. I didn't mean for you to know until I got down. Well, that's all right, Chuck. I, I guess it was my fault. Maybe if you'd been flying in the daytime, it wouldn't have happened. No, you were right. I don't know enough about gliders or flying or anything. Well, you can always learn. I understand they give a pretty good course at Tech. Tech? Oh, gee, Dad! Mr. Harris, you want it on the phone. Coming. Probably the newspaper. Where is it? Oh, Chuck, Chuck, you're safe. Sure, I'm safe. And what do you think, Penny? I'm going to go to Tech. And when I learn what it's all about, I'm going to build another glider and fly it all over the place. Ain't that dilly? Chuck Harris. Oh! <gasps> After going up like that and scaring a girl almost to death, you come back. You dare come back and talk What's about it. What's eating a... you? I just said it was Dilly. Oh, you, you. Oh. Hey, what goes on? Oh, Chuck. You slapped me in the face. I know, but oh, I didn't mean it. Oh, I don't know what made me do it. Hey, you gone swacky. Well, no, but, well, it was just being so scared and then seeing you standing there laughing and then I. Well, what's the matter, Chuck? Why are you looking at me like that? Oh, I... Well, gee, gee whiz, Penny, but you know you're awful pretty. Who, me? Yeah. I I don't know what it is, but I never felt like this before. I think... I think I'm going to kiss you. Oh, Chuck, I... Oh. <laughs> oh, gee, I... Hey, Dad! Dad, it worked! <laughs> Our stars, Jane Withers and Jackie Cooper, will be back in a moment for their curtain calls. There's a phrase that you hear more and more often nowadays, living within one's budget. Well, if you should take the old, the literal meaning of that phrase, you'd find living within your budget a very uncomfortable business. Because literally, it means living inside a little bag or wallet. Yes, that's what the word budget originally meant, a small bag or wallet. But millions of women have found that they can live within their budgets in today's meaning of the phrase and do it comfortably and easily with the help of Lux Flakes. For instance, when they buy a dress, they make sure it's luxable. It costs only about a penny, you know, to freshen a dress with new quick Lux. And with gentle Lux care, you can count on getting more wear from each dress you buy. That helps the budget, too. New Quick Lux has none of the harmful alkali you find in many popular wash day soaps, so your pretty washables stay fresh and unfaded, new looking longer. Yes, Lux flakes are gentle, quick, thrifty. Care that experts advise, too. Actually, more makers of fine washables advise New Quick Lux than advise all other soaps put together. Now, the next time you shop for a dress or a blouse, insist on luxable fabrics. You'll have a wide choice, not only in silk and cotton and wool, but in the lovely new rayons and nylons, too. Then, 
Stick to care that experts advise. America's favorite care for fine things. Thrifty, new, quick Lux Flakes. You'll find it an easy, pleasant way to be well-dressed within your budget. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. We're glad that her first bow had a happy ending. Because we'd hate to see either Jane Withers or Jackie Cooper on Hackney. And they're all smiles now for their curtain call. Oh, thank you, Mr. DeMille. And it was swell being here. It sure was. And I hope we can keep on your guest list, sir. Mm, you certainly can. We need you both to keep us uh, up to the minute on the changes in the English language. <laughs> yes, sir. And say, I noticed that you didn't use many of those new words like swacky and hep and... No, no, unless 23 skidoo would qualify. <laughs> 23 skidoo? Why, well, that's wonderful. Yeah, it might sweep the country. What does it mean, sir? Why, it means... Well, 30 or 40 years ago, everybody said 23 skidoo. It was... You know, the slang of the moment. <laughs> yes, sir, but uh, what did you say it meant? Now, wait a minute, Jane. I asked you first about Swacky. Uh, Mr. DeMille. Yes, Jackie. I'm your pal. What's, uh, what's on the show next week? Oh, thanks for helping me out of that jam, <laughs> pal. Next week, Jackie, the play is Universal's comedy hit, Hired Wife. And our stars are William Powell and Myrna Loy. In the play, Bill is forced to acquire a wife overnight to save his business. So he picks his secretary. That's Myrna. She's the lucky girl. With a setup like that, I'm sure you see the possibilities for entertainment next Monday night. Oh, they're two of my favorites, Mr. DeMille, and I'll certainly be listening in. Good night. Good night, Mr. DeMille. Good night. Good night. <laughs> it's going to seem awfully quiet around here without you two. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents William Powell and Myrna Loy in Hired Wife. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Navy Day the day on which Americans everywhere do honor to the men, ships, and planes of our first line of defense. Never before in its history has our Navy better deserved the support and confidence of the whole nation. And now, another important announcement. In your own community, the annual mobilization for human needs is now in progress. We can all help those less fortunate than ourselves by supporting the local community chest drive. Give all you can. Jane Weathers appeared tonight through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox Studio and will soon be seen in Young America. Jackie Cooper appeared through the courtesy of RKO Studio and will soon be seen in the Paramount picture, Glamour Boy. The part of Penny's mother was played tonight by Dwayne Thompson. You also heard Sidney Miller as Roger, Charles Peck as Evan, Virginia Sale as Effie, Boyd Davis as Mr. Harris, Betty Jane Haney as Julie, and Charles Seal as Chuck's father. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. Our Lux Radio Theater production of Her First Bow has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of new quick Lux Flakes, the tissue-thin soap flakes used by smart housewives everywhere and by the great motion picture studios to protect the million-dollar wardrobes you see on the screen. This is your announcer, Melville Roick, bidding you good night on behalf of our cast and the Lux Radio Theater. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>